Okay, so um, hello, Jose. My name is Sue Rosano, and I am, as you introduced me, I'm in the Munster University of Applied Sciences. I'm currently directing the Science to Business Marketing Research Center and also uh, working on topics of innovation, management, entrepreneurship. And within this context, within the, the, um, my role, we developed our project we are in, Women Entrepreneurs in Regional Inclusive Entrepreneurial Ecosystems. And this is a project that I'm leading currently with my team at the Science to Business Marketing Research Center. And you asked me also, what is my, uh, my contact with the topic of entrepreneurship? Uh, well, I have been in, involved in the topic of entrepreneurship si since more than 10 years. Um, I come from Mexico. I have been teaching entrepreneurship in high school levels and all the way to further education, if you, if you might. Um, and now what happens in our center is that we tackle entrepreneurship um, very different. For us, universities play a very important role in many topics. One of those is entrepreneurship. And we always look at what is the role of higher education in entrepreneurship. And we look at this population and we saw that these approaches from science to business, marketing, university business cooperation were also very good frameworks approaches to also talk about women's entrepreneurship that comes from universities. So that is how I have been involved in the topic since 2015, 16, with our first project, which was uh, WISE on uh, women entrepreneurs in the STEAM field. So since then, we have been gathering a knowledge on the topic. Yeah. for you. So you, you have been uh, pushing for this for a long time. That's good. There's still a lot of work to be done. And in that sense, so um, what are some of the most significant challenges that women entrepreneurs face in urban environments? And how can we create the right environment or the right atmosphere for them to, uh, to thrive? Well, um, women entrepreneurs face uh, different challenges, and this is something we have learned. Uh, for example, if I give you the perspective from our project we are in, was to take a look at this regional approach and to put at the center the entrepreneurs, their ventures. And what happens is that we look at many regions in Europe that would represent or were representative of different levels of ecosystems maturity and also development degree in, in these regions. Because we didn't want to give a biased statement about these challenges. This is what we wanted to understand. Women entrepreneurs in the different context. Um, and we found that um, among the challenges that they face, especially I have to clarify our target group is, women entrepreneurs that come with higher education, either they are um, in the university and entering the ecosystem or they have graduated. And then when they are outside, they want to enter again the ecosystem. So that is our target group and, and the resource that we have. But one of the main challenges that we found with uh, more than 365 interviews with the stakeholders, uh, was that they perceive a male-dominated environment. That was one of the key challenges that we found across the regions. Um, another one that we uh, found was that women are excluded from networks. That means we saw a lot of networks that are growing like women-only networks, for example. But what happens with these uh, networks that are women-only is that they exclude or have the, the fear or uh, to exclude women from the main ecosystem where all the resources are, especially when we talk about this population of women that want to found companies that are knowledge-based or even technology-based. They need many resources, many expertise. So we saw these challenges at the level of the ecosystem, at the level of networks, which is the concept we use in, let's say, networking theory, network approaches is embeddedness, that, that women really are where the resources are. And we also found 
what is well uh, is documented and it's still in the core of the discussion that they have poor access to financing and um, we we just have to see for example in in Germany the amount of finance in, in venture capital that is going to women only uh, women founded ventures and those were roughly the main challenges that we found but within that we saw a lot of other challenges for example rooted in the education that we deliver education that is uh, uh, usually delivered with sensational stories of on the one hand male entrepreneurs that have hit the media so steve jobs elon musk uh, all of those that are out of the um, something that women can relate to and also entrepreneurs in universities they might get some inspiration because they are sensational stories but to what extent do i believe that that could be the path i could follow so we saw that there is a lot that we could do from higher education we won't solve anything but this is something but in these three areas i will tell you that those were the main challenges that we found. You mentioned male dominance. You mentioned um, it is difficult to get funding and to access the, the pool of resources. Do you think it has to do with the fact that, statistically speaking, uh, women entrepreneurs lean more towards social entrepreneurship in terms of uh, so they don't focus that much in in uh, just profit for the sake of profit, which is what uh, venture capitalists like they want profit they want just money and uh, it's more like i would say more empty and entrepreneurship just for the sake of money whereas women entrepreneurs they have a purpose behind the kind of companies that they create well this is um this is a very uh, hard question to just answer like that but one of the what it seems to be from the data we are gathering and from the series of still uh, publications we are preparing to, to talk about financing. Um, a lot of the stories for financing, they go towards venture capital. When we actually see there are many other sources, that is just to start with. A lot of when we talk about the problems of financing, we talk about venture capital. But there are also banks and there are uh, crowdfunding. There are many other sources, but a lot of these uh, stories start with venture capital. Now you said, does it have to do with the choices that women make? And that is one of the challenges we face in women entrepreneurship, because uh, the way you, you place it and the way, the way it was asked is like, is the problem the choice of women? Um, and this is something that usually we think it is that because let's say it's our fault, we want to build social, we want to be sustainable, but this is this is not on us. It is in the system. And I tell you what happens uh, when it comes to entrepreneurial ecosystems and we talk about the role of university, everything starts by thinking that uh, startups are only the only way that you transfer knowledge from the universities. From that point, you are already discriminating other faculties, other disciplines that could join. So we tend to focus on startups that will be made by technology base. So the STEAM. If you start from there, you will see already that women are underrepresented in those fields. So the probabilities or the odds, the numbers that the funding will go to male founded business, that would be just higher for men, just because there are less women in those fields. But as you know, universities transfer knowledge by mechanisms of entrepreneurship, but they don't need to be all the time through patents and licenses. Women, for example, are well represented in other faculties and they are building their ventures. And they also build a lot of, uh, bring a lot of innovation that they can articulate. So what happens when it comes to startups that are tech-based. This is exactly the challenge I told you about this male-dominated environment. We picture the, techno the normative technology entrepreneur as being a man. And investors are waiting for that attitude. 
they are waiting for masculine attitudes that want to grow, that want technology, and also the appearance that it looks like they go into uh, yeah, a tech entrepreneur. They are waiting a male tech entrepreneur and everything starts there quite hard, okay? So that is uh, one of the challenges and how do we picture the successful entrepreneur? It needs to be a tech, it tends to be a man, and that is what investors are um, are sort of expecting. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is one of the challenges to, to stereotype these entrepreneurs. But also, when you look at the other side, who is bringing the money? If you see the representation of women among venture capitalists in Europe, it is also very low. And there are studies that really said women investors tend to invest more in what in, in women founded ventures. There are many principles for that, but one of those is they understand. So you invest in what you can understand. My colleague uh, Saskia Stoker from Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences brought in one of our uh, capacity building sessions a great example. Just take a look at the investments for research and development uh, for erectile dysfunction that has been done, knowing that not all men suffer from that. And take a look at the investments that have been done for women, for menopause symptoms for women, knowing that every single woman passed through that. So the market is bigger than the other, but it's just that there are less women investors also understanding and supporting, okay? So that's another cause that there are less women investors. And the second and the most recent studies that we have seen is when we have women investors investing in women founded business, it could be good for the first round. But when these women founded business need a second round of investment, they might be, the investors might hesitate on that because they might think you just got the money because you're a woman, because of your gender, because you got the first financing through, um, through a woman investor, which is, uh, it's called the principle of attribution bias. And this is also a problem because it's not only in finance, but it's also in many targeted support mechanisms that really help women. So they stigmatize us like you just got it because you're a woman. And so the competences go down and then going further into that, it becomes, we perpetuate ourselves. So that is a bit of the story behind that Thank we you, have. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Then going back to it, because uh, you briefly explained that uh, in the interaction, uh, we briefly touched upon we are in project. Um, can you explain what is and, and, and why? What is the purpose behind it? But also, what is the we are in approach? The we are in approach. Uh, if I heard well, yes. Can yes. you know what? By way, I haven't. Just kidding me. Yeah, I I lost you for a second. I I didn't hear very well. But uh, you asked me about the we are in project and the we are in approach, right? Yes, exactly. So our we are in project, women entrepreneurs, in regional inclusive entrepreneurial ecosystems. Um, at the beginning, for example, the question you asked me, is it the choice of the woman which is kind of wrong or is it a matter of women? A lot of, uh, a lot of the, 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 the knowledge that we have around what is the problem of women targets a lot to the individual women. So you would recall, for example, the book of Sheryl Sandberg of Lean In, pretty much arguing that women just are not leaders because they don't lean in meaning you don't want to do it. This is just one part of the story. We saw before we are in, we saw a lot of approaches that were targeting women, like if women would need a special support. So financing for women. Um, but we change, first of all, we change the perspective from the individual to the ecosystem, to analyze all actors and all the systems and to go from the single woman or trying to fix women to fix to enter a system, to look at the system, the resources, the networks. That's why we tackle this 
on women entrepreneurs. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, we also look at having high numbers of graduates from higher education that are women. So more than 60% of the graduates are women. And we saw that the ones that go into the incubators or accelerators are uh, lower. Just the representation, uh, for example, in Germany, it's um, less than 18% of the startups are founded by women. So we see that it's a lot of potential here, a lot of uh, even more women in higher education and less when they when it comes to entrepreneurship. So we thought if we wanted to change something, let's do it from this side of, let's say, crossing the valley of that, this knowledge that is not going all the way there through inclusive approaches, not only gender-wise, but also structural, meaning let's do this gap or this valley um, shorter or uh, sorry, closer to each other. And we started working with universities, with their incubators in each region. And um, this is how we are in uh, started to uh, understand and make use of that underutilized potential that women in higher education represent. So because we are focusing on uh, women really entering the ecosystem, we also thought not only a Education has to change, but really the ecosystem. So because women might leave higher education, they graduate, but then they want to enter. And if this ecosystem, incubators, accelerators have not changed to be inclusive, then they also don't enter. So that's why we tackle that from both sides. The we are in learning approach because we are tackling this issue from higher education. That's our positioning we think that higher education could make a difference. And it's also the training programs. So the we are learning approach are principles on how should we deliver entrepreneurship education in a way that make women feel invited to the ecosystem, that they think this is for me. I come back to uh, the example you gave me about women, entre women entrepreneurs founding social business. That these narratives, that these concepts also come into classroom. It's not only about profit and growth, but it's also about impact and sustainability, collaboration, networks. Um, so all of those concepts we saw in our research, they are not really um, what dominates the, the uh, the lectures or what they talk about, um, along with, for example, when we invite entrepreneurs to our classroom, uh, we found also in our data, the lecturers are more familiar to name male entrepreneurs in the ecosystem and invite them. So the we are learning approach gives us several principles on what is that, um, how can we create more inclusive entrepreneurship education approaches and just uh, very quick to mention them, we are focusing on principles and one would be 100% inclusivity. Really speak also to not only about women, but also other minorities, let's say in the ecosystem that they feel invited, but also that other disciplines relate to that which is not only about technology fields, but other disciplines that they feel invited to entrepreneurship. Um, another principle of this we are in learning approaches have relatable role models. So role models, if I want to teach about entrepreneurship, I don't need to use the case of Elon Musk all the time. We use our relatable role models, a woman entrepreneur from the region that found the business that came from the same university, if possible, but that had the same path in that ecosystem. Uh, show the realistic picture of entrepreneurship. Talk about failure away as, as well, which is also part of the realistic picture of entrepreneurship and bring that to classroom. Um, opportunity driven entrepreneurship, because a lot of the stories around women entrepreneurship could be that it's out of necessity because I don't have work because I need to, to self-employ myself or find flexible flexible ways to combine family and career. But opportunity driven means knowledge base that with higher education, I have many choices 
but I'm choosing to pursue this opportunity of knowledge based uh, ventures. Um, inclusive support finance, well, this is part of, um, on the one hand, understanding what is out there and preparing also while the system changes, prepare our students to those environments to understand what is it out there. And structural changes in the ecosystem which has to do with all actors really understanding, coming into, for example, if you are teaching, invite not only entrepreneurs to tell the stories, but invite representatives of accelerators, invite representatives of incubators, all actors that could tell you the path. So that is our we are learning approach um, for education, yes. More inclusive education. I don't hear you. I think you are in mood. Uh... Yeah. Yes, now I hear you. Okay. So yeah, I, I was saying that I have another question before we jump to one of them uh, that has been posted in the chat. But uh, because you just mentioned um, role models and the importance of role models, uh, can you dive a little bit deeper into how can exposure to successful women entrepreneurs influence aspiring entrepreneurs? Well, more than than only let's say uh, successful, uh, it, it's it, it's hard to to put su successful in which way. No, but what what we try to do is to talk about relatable role models. Okay, that they have chosen entrepreneurship as a career path, and how can they impact? Well, role models become part of this ecosystem. So usually. Um, they help you to put a context. At the beginning, I told you about the challenges in one of the challenge was this male dominated environment that really influences the behavior of women. So if women only perceive that um, men are around and those are the role models, it will influence the career choices that we make. When we have relatable role models, um, for example, women entrepreneurs in the ecosystem, that's the environment that they see. And these role models, in a way, start together building a narrative. What is entrepreneurship all about? If we have uh, role models that had to do with sustainability, with social ventures, with impact, the narrative around would be as such. And then um, individuals, let's say uh, women, students or graduates, they use these narratives to understand the reality and shape, in a way, their identity. And then they will take certain actions. They will see, okay, that is uh, that is part of the ecosystem. That is acceptable. That is part of, of the culture. Then I'll take certain actions towards that end, okay? Because they are the, the, the system where they are. The way, or the theories we're using is the way you perceive the ecosystem uh, the, the the environment, sorry, it will really influence how you will behave, how you take certain choices. That's why we said it's not only a choice of the woman, just do it. No, the environment, what you perceive, it will influence how you will behave. So role models and the visibility of relatable role models will really actually see how the other generations develop, in which direction, okay? In which direction they will develop their ventures. Thank you. So it's uh, essential or important to have someone shedding light, illuminating the way ahead, so that other yeah. people can actually walk and way and improve in a safe way and travel. Um, yeah. So do you have time? Because we started a bit later. Are you okay with a couple more questions? Um, yes, okay. We can take another question or we could also check on the... Yeah, I have so... one question from the uh, chat, from the q &A. Yes. yes. So we have uh, someone asking, how can these gender stereotypes be broken down? What kind of mechanisms can be put in place from policy initiatives to strategies for promoting university entrepreneurship to funding mechanisms? Oh, wow. Uh, this is very challenging, but I guess I could focus on one area, okay? Um, one thing that... Um, so the environment, the, the actors in the ecosystem can really influence yeah, the direction. One important thing is to 
to break these stereotypes is to break the illusion that only women networks or targeted mechanisms to women that they will make a change. This is an illusion and we have seen it through a review of literature to some papers, publication we are preparing that um, it creates an illusion that we are including women, but in reality we are excluding them because it is reinforcing the stereotypes that women in a way are special and they can't. So the system needs to go down for them in a way to, to target, to help them and to lift them up. But this just perpetuates these stereotypes that women are like weak, for example, or so what needs to be done is more inclusive approaches, targeting diversity, for example, when it comes to financing and funding. If women are the only one founding women, um, women found a business, then I told you this, the, there are studies that said that the second round is hard to get. So what needs to be done is investors really targeting diversity of entrepreneurs, not only for, about women, but also with immigrant background, with um, diversity, not only technology driven, uh, the creative industries have also the ways to do their ventures and so on and so forth. So it's about this diversity, regardless of the gender. So one of the things uh, is promote more that these um, this mixed, for example, these networks are not only women, very constant, but really mixed networks. And within these mixed networks, promote inclusivity that men, women all feel invited, put there their resources to not stigmatize and isolate women. Yes. Thank you. Um, I don't know if, if there are any other questions from people from the audience. Otherwise, I have one last question. Um, is looking ahead, looking to the future. Uh, what are the key areas where you see potential for growth or for change in the field of women entrepreneurship? You just mentioned one. You just mentioned the ecosystem changing and becoming more inclusive. Mm -hmm. What are others? I I see um, I see a big um, role in higher education. And not only higher education, but higher education building bridges to other levels of education. Because entrepreneurship needs to be presented as a career path. And I always make the analogy with the sports. If you want to be a professional sport, you don't decide when you are about to finish school and then, uh, or your, your education. This is a career path and the path is well started and the path is well presented for girls already when they want to be gymnastics, when they want to be tennis players, football players. It's something that takes long because entrepreneurship is, it's really a, a fantastic career. It's almost like sports. You are in competition, you pursue your own purpose and, and you are really developing fantastic competences in your personality to really vi uh, realize the vision you have of the world. And I see a lot of potential to bring that down from entrepreneurship education from all the work we do that we changed a lot of this um for example uh, that entrepreneurship and risk they have to be together and women are risk averse that is a different path failure exists let's talk about that um we also need to change this language of uh, growth a uh, profit economy money to purpose vision um Perhaps the narrative itself of entrepreneurship has to be changed to attract more people and to understand better. And I think higher education will play a big role if we pay more attention on, on how it is developed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's not the that we hear, but uh, the jargon that surrounds entrepreneurship exactly. is scary for many people. Yes. And uh, it, it actually pushes them away from engaging in, in something that's beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank um, you, Jose. <laughs>